Prince of Persia, Sands of Time remake. I mean, the Forgotten Sands. Totally different thing. The prince, who still doesn't have a name, goes to his brother Malik. Yes, he does have a name. I guess he drew the short straw or something. S City. And it is a pretty bad, or pretty good, depending on how you look at it, time to go. Because the city is under siege. Which, I understand, is also the title of a crappy Seagal movie, but aren't they all? The Siege, however, is pretty good. Check it out. Anyway, Malik doesn't actually want to give his city up, so he seeks out the legendary sand army of King Solomon, a figure who is apparently pretty famous, I don't know that much about him, except I hear that he once cut a baby in half because it had two mothers? I don't know, I, I try to distance myself from such rabid homophobia, you know? Anyway, it doesn't go well because the sand army it doesn't really like to be told what to do, or at least not by any human. It does like to be ordered around by Ratosh, who's basically Lucifer if he was made of sand, and basically the sands sweep through the kingdom, tell me if you've heard this before, and it affects everyone, except for the people who have magical items. You know you've heard it before. Basically, everyone is turned to sand statues, and a seemingly limitless army starts to rise up through the floor, which I didn't realize sand went through solid surfaces, but whatever. And you now have to just try to stop Ratosh and, you know, fight your way through hordes of vases, other breakables, and sand creatures. I'm not kidding, there are a ton of breakables. And yet again, they hold, you know, extra magic energy. I don't know why they keep doing that. It was much better when you could only get it from defeating enemies. Anyway, basically, the situation is about the same as has been with the other recent Prince of Persia games. Not counting the Sands of Time trilogy, which was better. It's too streamlined. There is far too little challenge here. Near the end it actually does start to get challenging, and there are a couple of select spots in the game where it briefly gets challenging, but on the whole it just mostly feels like the game is playing itself for you. You really don't feel like you're doing much of anything, like you have control. The puzzles are pretty good, although they tend to be really easy and really obvious. You hardly ever stand around trying to figure out how to go to, you know, how to get where you're going. You know, again, unlike the earlier ones where that was part of the challenge. You didn't just have to do these amazing feats. You had to figure out where to actually go, you know. The game pretty much just shoves you in the right direction all the time. It's almost like, you know, someone grabs the controller from you and says, no, look, I'll do it, and you just, there gotten you further. And every time you try to play, that, you know, hypothetical older brother, irritating, obnoxious other player jumps in, grabs the control from you, you get the idea. The game's length is nice and solid. It's again about, you know, if you play like constantly, it'll take you two or three days to get through it, about the same as the other ones. That's nice, at least. It's not like with the most recent Splinter Cell game, where it's suddenly you can beat it in a day if you just apply yourself. Well, at least that game does have multiplayer. This game does add some magic powers, in addition to, you know, rewinding time, a power that, you know, returned by popular demand, even though they did kind of solve it in both the Wii version of this game and the 2008 game that was also, that was just called Prince of Persia. 
the power is streamlined overly, so it doesn't feel like... It's, it's kind of just you activate the power and it automatically rewinds pretty much all the way back you know, to where when you were last standing still or something, which is kind of annoying. It was nice in the other ones where you could really choose it, but I could go on for a very long time about how much is streamlined. Basically, if there's something in this game, it's probably streamlined. You don't have that much control over it, and it takes away the wrist. Done. The magic powers are not bad, but the ones for combat are mostly useless because you don't need them. They're not bad per se, they can be useful at times, but the combat is almost always really easy. The non-combat powers, to go over those first, are the powers of flow, time of course, and power of memory. Yes, you can remember, you have like photographic memory, it's awesome. No, basically that power means you put an area back that was there before. You know, you're tramping through ruins at points and yeah, some of those areas that should be there for you to get further aren't there anymore. This doesn't sound like it's you know, it adds anything at all, but the thing is, you can only add one area at a time. So at points, you have to jump from one area that isn't there to another area that isn't there, so you have to switch mid-air. Some of this, some of the use of this does get pretty cool. The power of flow means that you can temporarily basically turn any water that is currently flowing into ice. And ice you can grab onto, you can climb, you can run up it, if it's a waterfall, and this power is limited, there's a meter of it, and once that runs out, it just won't work anymore. And if you're on, you know, ice, TS, you'll fall down. This is pretty cool also because sometimes you have to jump through some water without freezing that onto some other water and other things. Basically, this what this adds is more opportunities to the puzzles, and they do make pretty good use of it. It's still fun to run through the levels, and the game never really does get completely boring, although the level design and the basic look is kind of generic. It's really not anywhere near as mesmerizing as it was in the entire Sands of Time trilogy and in the 2008 game and really also as the Wii version, at least at times, is. Now, the... I suppose that you could also call the flight thing a power. Basically, you jump and then you press the flight key and you leap through the air directly onto an enemy. This does require that there is an enemy and it's both if there is an enemy in the air or, is, or an enemy on the ground. These new magic powers do help to differentiate this, at least somewhat, from being a Sands of Time remake. I'm not kidding, pretty much everything in this game, or at least pretty much everything from the Sands of Time game, is put into this game somehow. I'm not gonna give away all of it, of course, but if you've played Sands of Time, you'll be able to figure out what happens in this pretty much. One of the few big differences is that there isn't really a love interest. There's a female character who helps you because they don't... They, they like that formula, evidently. There's one in every single one of these games, you know. Yeah, except for maybe the first two. The third, maybe. Anyway. The... The non, the, the combat magic powers are ice, which basically freezes everything in pretty much a direct line going out from when you hit your sword. Not entirely sure if you have to hit an enemy for this to activate or if it's just whenever you slash, but anyway, yeah, it does kind of slow them down or freeze them somewhat. 
second one is fire, yeah, elements. And it's basically that everywhere you go you leave a little bit of, I don't know, fire residue, I don't know, on the ground and possibly also when you hit the enemies with your sword and this you know, gradually hurts them. Then there is the earth shield, or the rock shield, which is basically, you know, it dons a couple of rocks and it protects your body against blows. And it it works pretty well. And as I said before, these really aren't that, you know, necessary. And then there's the whirlwind, which is basically, you know, you pull the wrestler, to slam right down into the ground, and it knocks the enemies down. That can be useful, especially if you're getting crowded, because the moment an enemy is stunned, especially when on the ground, you can finish them off with a single hit, as long as you move over to them and, you know, press the attack key. There is no more blocking, you only dodge. This is potentially interesting, at least, because it is really the first time one of these games hasn't had a block feature. and. It's okay, you know, I certainly get that for some of these things, they don't really want you to be able to block at all. Also because some of the enemies attack more with magic than, you know, by striking at you. Yeah, it it's okay, I personally prefer it when you have the ability to block, but it works and it's at least something different. And that's really what this game lacks the most. <laughs> Here's a hint to any future or current game developers. If you want me to buy a new game, your selling point shouldn't be, this is just like a game we made seven years ago, okay? Just, no. Not a good starting point. At all. Basically, combat has gotten a bit of an overhaul. It's not completely different, but the system is more free. We are not granted the easily spammed powerful moves of the second two Sands of Time trilogy games, Warrior Within and The Two Thrones, but instead it's closer to what we had in the Sands of Time. You basically, you can attack in any direction, you can easily switch back and forth, the great thing is that, unlike in that game, in this you can really switch direction and at any time. If you attack, let's say, to this side, and then you decide you want to go to that side, just you know, press attack and then press the key to that side. That's it. You'll be attacking in that side. Even if you do the power-up, which is when you hold the attack key down for a little bit, he'll charge up. If you're pointing it that way, but then you press that way before you let go of the attack key, he will attack that way. Very versatile of a system, and it's, it's really great. It works quite well. It's easy to juggle the enemies, so to speak, to, you know, keep them all away from you. And it would be awesome if the enemies were actually also a challenge, so that it wasn't basically just you, you know, wading through them like they were absolutely nothing. The design of the enemies is kind of bland. Uh, the main ones are just skeletons made of sand. That's really it. And then, you know, you get some, you know, bigger ones that kind of look like wrestlers who donned a little armor and... Yeah. Some of them have shields and then you have to you know, deal with the shield first, which you do by kicking. That's another new thing. You can kick in this and it will basically knock an enemy down and sometimes you can shove them over a ledge, which I personally find way too enjoyable. And it, this works well. It's also kind of streamlined, but in this case it does kind of work to its benefit. You can basically kick anyone in the general direction you're kicking, a small arc, you know, not unrealistically. And basically, if you're close to the enemy, you'll just, you know, use your shoulder, do that little thing. If you're further away, you will do a full-on kick. 
The graphics have been improved, which is good because all the cutscenes are in the engine, but honestly they're not that much better, I'd say. The Prince himself looks kind of bland. Really, not that great and, you know, really cool of a face or range of expression. And there are a lot of graphic glitches, like, you know, little effects that'll stay after, you know, they'll stick in the air, and, you know, it's not a big problem. The game doesn't have bugs as such, but is a little underwhelming, and the effects in general just don't look that good. It's just kind of like somebody just realized they could do flashy stuff, you know, in various colors. It's like the with the Wii version, it's just not that compelling, you know, and when you consider what we've seen earlier in this series, you gotta make it compelling. Near the very end, the game does get really, really epic. And you do really get the sense that you have to win or something really bad is gonna go down. That's really cool. The plot itself is decent, but you can really tell they were just, they were desperate to work in some sands, you know, to have you fighting essentially sand monsters, to have you, you know, with some kind of time rewinding ability. <sighs> yeah, you know, they were, they realized that people wanted that again after the 2008 game that didn't have it. And it's just, you know, you, you shouldn't have that kind of limitation when you start to write a story. As a result, the story is just kind of average. It's very standard fare. You're not going to remember it for that long after playing. The game doesn't particularly have any extras, basically just two trials, and that's kind of it. There's also only two difficulty settings, and there aren't really any unlockables except for you play points. Now, this does have the, uh, I think it's called DRM, which means you need an internet connection to play the game, not just, you know, activate it once and then you can play it. No, you need an internet connection to play the game. This bothers some people, and I can understand why. It definitely is annoying that you, you know, have to be connected to the internet to play, but one point in its favor that I no, that I found when playing this is that as it stores your save games online, you can play it on any computer as long as you log on to your Ubisoft profile. That's it. And it also... I lost the use of an OS during, you know, as I played this game. Not because of the game, mind you. And I played it on the other OS with no problems. I didn't even have to retype my registration code. I was worried that it would say, oh, sorry, that your registration's code had already been used. Nope. I just had to log into my user. It didn't even say anything. It was just, you know, logged into my user and, you know, booted up the game, pressed continue, and I started off right where I left off. That's really cool. That's a good point in this game's favor. And I suppose that's about what there is to say about the game. All in all, if you're addicted to the gameplay like me, you could do a lot worse, but personally, and I hope I'm not alone here, I really want them to make these more challenging again. I. I miss the Sands of Time trilogy level of quality, you know. I miss that level of imagination, of challenge, of story, of storytelling, design, and a lack of streamlining, you know. I really hope this streamlining thing 
goes away from gaming really soon.